Shalom. Want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect, the house of David, as well as the rest of the one third men, women, and children who will be delivered at the time of the Messiah's second coming, which is very, very clear that it's right around the corner. All right, if you look out into this world and don't see that judgment is right around the corner, then you need to repent, <laughs> all right, if you're of the nation of Israel. Now, I wanted to chime in on the icons, all right, as Apostle Tahar said, we need to get into the icons more. And uh, the icons are very, very important, you know, because uh, images, uh, everything, right, as they say, well, the... Uh, Holy images of the ancient, all right, men of the Lord were all dark skinned, okay? You know, from a light brown to a dark brown, all right? And uh, you had a period in time in history called the Renaissance, in which the meaning of Renaissance, which is scriptural, okay? Renaissance, it says the revival of art and literature under the influence of classical models 14th to 16th century, okay? So around the 14th and 16th centuries, you had a rebirth, all right? Let's keep reading. It says, the cultural style of art and architectural development, the Renaissance, all right? A revival of renewed interest in something, okay? So prior to the 14th century, what did you have? Okay, you had dark images of all of the saints, dark images of all of the so-called royal people of the earth, which were dark-skinned people, okay? But when the Renaissance happened, okay, it was basically the re re rebirth of the Roman Empire, the rebirth of the so-called white all right, plight, because prior to the Renaissance, Edomites were in caves and they were looked down upon. And the scriptures describe this whole narrative that we're reading about and we're going to show you. OK, um, it says revival, renewal, resurrection, reemergence. OK, reappearance, resurgence, rejuvenations, regeneration, rebirth. OK, so the Renaissance was the rebirth. All right. Of the so-called white man's image. And what did he do, all right, when he got into power? He did what he did as the uh, Greeks, okay? Before we get into that, this is 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. When they got, you know, control over the temple, what did they do? Because what does Jake like to do? Today we like to take pictures and, you know, take selfies and all of that, but back then they were actual paintings, OK, we had a lot of paintings so much that they couldn't destroy them all. This is first Maccabees three and forty eight and laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen, OK, had sought to paint the likeness of their images. And this is what they did when they gained control of the temple. And this is speaking of the Greek Empire. OK, this is speaking of the Greek Empire. OK, which they're not the original Greeks. They did that to the original Greeks. They took their culture and, 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 and their pictures and painted their likeness and said they were the original, all right, Greeks. They weren't the original Greeks, okay? But this is speaking of, all right, when they sacked the temple, when they, when they got all up in there and got control and a stronghold over, that, uh, uh, over the temple, man, okay? But what did they do? They painted the likeness of their images, OK, so we're going to go into the scriptures and show you that this narrative was written in the Holy Scriptures, man. All right. And then we're going to show you some icons. All right. Prior to the 1400s, because uh, brothers in this camp, you know, I know went to Europe, you know, for a few years ago. And all of the art, art and icons that were on display were from the 14th century onward. But when they asked about the prior centuries the people said well those are on uh, lockdown 
We really don't show those. Those are sacred. Why is that? Because those images are of us. All right. Which it, it, it would give you a sense of pride to know that you're connected to the greatest people on the planet Earth, man. That you're descendants of them, that they look like you. All right. Now. This is Revelation 20 and one This is a very spiritual chapter. OK, and it jumps. It says, and I saw an angel. All right. Yahweh Shai come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit. All right. And a great chain in his hand. All right. And what did he what do, what do you use a chain to do to lock something up, man? And he lay hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Remember, we read in Thessalonians, he whose coming is after the working of Satan. OK, and he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit over there in the area of Europe. All right. A low land. OK, no mineral resources, which is why they had to always go all around the world, stealing everybody else's man. All right. And shut him up and set a seal upon him. That he should deceive the nations no more. This is happening on the earth. OK. And, and Esau Edom is all about deception, but we're going to show you something. All right. Till the thousand years will, should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, in history. This is known as the Byzantine Empire. Well, let's look up how long was the Byzantine Empire. OK. Byzantine. I don't know how to spell it. How long was the yeah, the Byzantine Empire? One thousand years. <laughs> Some sources say eleven hundred, but fourteen fifty three after the siege of the Ottoman Empire took Constantinople, putting the end of the empire. Because prior to the rebirth, the Renaissance which you had various families. Some of the notable ones are the Medici's, the Borgia family. All right. Um, these so-called white people regained their, their, their plight because they were down and out for these a thousand year periods in the royal images, which we have book, a book called, you know, uh, Nature Knows No Color Line, as well as various books with the true icons of the people who were in rulership doing the thousand years of the Byzantine Empire, which Byzantine means backwards. That's a play on words. OK, there was a lot of things that Esau Edom uses in his today society that he stole from that era. Now, our people weren't in their full righteousness. All right. But they were ruling, man. They were royal families. OK, when you look at the Pope's coat of arms, it's so-called Negroes because those are the true saints. You see, Byzantine means backwards. What he's telling you is that for this a thousand year period, because when you go and ask what happened during the Dark Ages, you notice Esau Edom says, we don't know. But this same man will tell you billions of trillions of years ago, this is what was going on. This is what, was, what happened at the Big Bang. And he'll explain it in details and show you this and that and give you the illustrations. But a thousand year period, all right, before the 1400s, he can't tell you what happened. There was a period where no art, no literature for nothing happened for a period of a thousand years. That's what he'll teach you in your school. Now that we're bringing this truth out, he's saying, well, the Moors had us in slavery. Well, why, why has that never been taught in school? And the slavery that the Moors and, and our people had you in at this time was not the slavery. All right. That you so-called white people practiced and committed over here. All right. You were servants. You were looked down upon. You were chased into the caves. But ultimately, you, we, you, we didn't treat you as you treated us. Our people were actually a little bit too nice to your asses, man. But for a thousand years, all right, so-called Negroes ruled, man. Let's type in Negro dark, image, uh, dark ages. Negroes ruling Europe. Just to see what comes up. Because they, they had images. Okay. 
showing you the Bible tells you the true history, man. There you go. See if we can just get the images. There you go. These were the images prior to the uh, the the you know during the Dark Ages, man. Noble Jakes, man. You see that? You could type in so-called African presence in in early Europe. You see that? When did the blacks rule Europe? See those icons? This is in Greece. Okay, the tree of Jesse. Okay. There you go. There's more. All right, and I got some saved too that I'll show. But this is just giving you an understanding of what was really happening during, all right, the Dark Ages, man. Okay. That's around the 1800s, but you get the, you get the, uh, the, the, there you go. Yep, and here's an example right here. Um, let me see if I can uh, zoom in on that. There you go. They load, laid open the book of the law. This is the original image before and then after the Renaissance period. This is the art. All right, that that took precedence, and we'll show you that the scripture said that that would happen, man. He blasphemed everything. All right, because the original picture of so-called Virgin Mary and the Son were dark. Okay, but eventually they be they all got whitewashed. They got lighter and lighter and lighter over the years. Okay, <laughs> and, and there was a purpose and reason for that. But um, there you go. We, we found out that the, the, the Byzantine Empire was a thousand years. So Esau was cast into the bottomless pit and shut up. All right. And a seal was set up on him that he should not deceive the nations no more until the thousand years shall be fulfilled. And during that time, we can go to Job 30 real quick. He was looked down upon. He was known as a caveman. He was known as something that, that nobody really wanted to deal with, man. Okay. It's Job 30, a prophetic book, and one. But now they that are younger than I, because spiritually Esau Edom is younger than us, although he came out first in the heavens, we were chosen above them. All right. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision. This is a prophecy of what would be happening. And we're and they have us in derision now, whose fathers I would have disdained to set with the dogs of my flock. All right. It says, uh, I'm going to jump to three. For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who cut up mallows, which is, you know, that, that's linked to marshmallows. Why do you think they promote marshmallows so much in this society? Well, go look up the mallow uh, root. OK, that, that's that's what they ate. All right. And the marshmallow is supposed to be synonymous with the mallow. OK, matter of fact, let's look up mallows. Show you that everything. All right, there's nothing new under the sun. S'mores. That Esau loves him some damn marshmallows, man. Promoting that. <laughs> All right. Um, mallows. All right. Maluka. All right. Malach, malawaka. Malawaka. Mallow. All right. A plant that grows in salt marshes. Now, let's look up something real quick. Mallow mush marshmallow. Okay. Mallow marshmallows, the connection. See, marshmallows and, and mallows basically, you know, are synonymous. You know, <laughs> and while the real marshmallows, marshmallows, that goes back to mallows, bears little relation to the puffs to the puffy treats that look like its name both may have a sore throat fighting properties okay is there mallows those bag marshmallows incidentally are no longer made from marshmallow roots see the original uh marshmallows were ultimately made from that root let's look up the mallow root yeah we gonna get into it all all right Mallow root. There you go. 
And this is why you see marshmallows everywhere. This is the original root. You see that? The, but now it's just a bunch of mess when you eat, get marshmallow. But this was the original. All right. So Esau Edom was in those caves. Okay. Eating mallow roots. Okay. <laughs> For their meat. All right. <laughs> All right, they were driven from among men. They cried after them as a thief because they stole everything. So they were driven into the caves. Their image was put out to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in the caves, and in the rocks, man. All right, and when you look up uh, Seir, the Horites, real quick. All right. I forget how it's spelled. Maybe it's one R. All right. Yep. Genesis uh, 36 and 20. These are the sons of Seir. All right. The Horite who inhabited the land. Now, when you look up Horite, and this is Seir was given unto Esau Edom, right? When you look up Horite, all right, what is the name of it? What is the definition? All right. Charai. Charai. Charaya. All right. Um cave dweller cave dweller okay so it's all it's all making sense it's all spiritual okay to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys in caves of the earth and in rocks among the bushes they braid this is their caveman history prophesied right here in the bible man all right uh, under the nettles all right there's there's a, a nettle plant where they gather together all right. And the Lord gave them those plants and those mallows and all of that so that they can survive. All right. And sort of still have a, a nation so that they can fulfill biblical prophecy, man. They were children of fools. Yea, they were children of base men. They were valor than the earth. Now I am their song. Yea, I am their byword. They abhor me. They flee far from me and spare not to spit in my face. So this is what happened. And this is what's happening now. They these these base people have been risen up. OK, it said they were the children of fools, the children of base men. They were valid in the earth. OK. Now. Let's get Daniel the fourth chapter real quick and we'll get into the icons and all of that. But I wanted to flush this all out. Um, Daniel four. And 17, this. Matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whosoever he will and set it over it the basis of men. So the base man, all right, would eventually get control of the earth and the basis nation on the planet earth is Esau Edom. So going back to Revelation 20, let's read this again. All right. There was a chain given, okay, from the Messiah. He came down on the earth, but through men, and one of those main men was Septimius Severus, or Severus Septimius, which means cutter of the seven, spiritual, laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, the deceiver, and Satan, the adversary, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit. He went into those caves and shut him up. He was, he, was, he was chased, he was looked at as a base man. Uga Uga. Okay, eating the mallow roots. Chilling. Eating out of skulls. Stanking. That he should deceive the nations no more till the a thousand years shall, should be fulfilled. And after that, he should be loosed a little season. All right, now this thousand year period in verse four, all right, through six are speaking of a whole nother thousand year period. That's speaking of in the kingdom of heaven when those who uh, are the 144,000 rule with the Messiah and set up dominion on the earth. Okay. You jump to verse seven. It says, and when a thousand years be expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. The Lord gave the kingdom to the basis of men. Esau, Edom would begin to fulfill his blessing. What is his blessing? Ruling the world by the sword. Let's get that. Okay. 
putting it all together. Let's get that. Genesis 27. And 39, and Isaac, his father, answered, saying be, unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thou live. All right. So eventually Esau would gain the fatness of the earth and the control of all the mineral resources on the earth. And by the sword shall thy, by thy sword shall thy live. And they live by the sword. They conquered the earth through that sword, okay? And shall serve thy brother, Jacob. And that happened under King David and is eventually going to happen when the throne of David is set back up. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt break the dominion. And that happened when they uprooted from under David. And that happened at the time of the Renaissance. Okay, they got from under the dominion of the Israelites. The brother that he's speaking of is Jacob that thou should break his yoke from off thy neck. Okay, and that's what happened. So after the thousand year period, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. The Renaissance period. Where else can this be explained? Revelation, the 13th chapter. And this is speaking of Esau, Edom, his system, the beast system, which started with the leopard, which is the Greek empire. Read that in Daniel. 13 and 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded unto death. All right. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. What did that mean that he, his deadly wound was healed? His deadly wound was healed through this Renaissance period. And in that Renaissance period, they started to destroy all of those dark images, man. Okay. Let's go back to Revelation 20. Okay. And when the thousand years were expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations, nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. OK, and how, what, what will be a way of deception? Iconoclasm. OK. Iconoclasm. Straight up. Iconoclasm, the action of taking or uh, assertively rejecting cherished beliefs, sacrilege. And institutions of established values and practices, the rejection or destruction of religious images as heretical, the uh, uh, the doctrine of iconoclast. OK, and when you go. Into it, you can see that they started to whitewash the images. That was a part of their deception, painting themselves as the holy people of the Bible. And of the ancient world, period. They started to destroy those images and stuff like this started to be painted. You see that? They they committed sacrilege. OK. Let's look up Renaissance art. Renaissance. Art. Bam. This is when all of this this crap started to just. The so-called white image became the standard of beauty. And he went out throughout the four corners of the earth, pushing the white image of, of, of the Messiah, Jesus <laughs> on everybody. And he's the devil. Look at him. Little uh, angels with their little peepees out and all of this little freaky crap you see everywhere. Well, this all stems from that Renaissance period. OK. So the question is, what did the images look like before that? You see all of this crap? This is the Renaissance. You know, you type in biblical saints. Let's type in biblical saints. <laughs> type in biblical saints and bam, what's going to come up? Edomites. <laughs> Everybody's so-called white. And they did this with the great men of the ancient world as, as well. You know, uh, Mozart, all of these different men, when you look up their stories, their friends describe them as dark skin. 
All right. But then when you look at the image that they'll have on Wikipedia, it's a so-called white man. OK, Casanova, for example, all of his friends said he was dark and it was built. All right. It was of an African tent. But then you look up the picture of Casanova, the greatest, the world's so-called greatest lover and poet. Then he's a so-called white man. You know that that was a Jake, an Israelite. But there you go. That's Renaissance art. So it says, after the 1,000 years, in the 1400s, they, the, the rebirth of the white plight, the Edomite right, <laughs> all right, he, he was loosed out of his prison, meaning the Lord took that seal off of him, and he was able to fulfill prophecy and go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. And eventually it will lead to Gog and Magog gathering the, all of these nations together to shoot missiles on Babylon the Great. All right, because everybody is fed up with you, even within your own system. All right, you have an infighting, man. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. All right, it's going to lead to Armageddon. So what did they destroy? Okay, we know in the scriptures, the, the original men of the Lord were from a, a light to a very dark brown. Okay, but through scattering, some of us look different now. But uh, these are some of the images just wanted to get all of that of the ancient world. Okay, see that? See that? Why, why didn't none of that pop up when you type in biblical saints? And what did Solomon say? I am black, all right, but calmly, meaning I am dark but beautiful. I am black and beautiful, basically, is what he was saying back then. Okay, my skin is dark, all right, but I am beautiful. Okay, O ye daughters of Jerusalem as the tents of Kedar, all right, as the curtains of Solomon. We were dark skinned people, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay, as well as the other tribes, but through scattering, all right, some are gonna appear lighter, man. And if you can't get over that, that's just your problem. Look at that. Look at that. That's supposedly uh the Messiah. Okay. The Messiah and his followers uh, uh, perform, uh, I believe, performing a miracle. King David. That's King David. It's an icon of King David, man. Malak Dawada. All right. And Lord willing, we're Bayath, house of David. Okay. These are all images. Of the ancient world, man. That's beautiful. I love that one. Color scheme is dope. <laughs> okay. And then he made sure to promote our images as just a bunch of buffoons. Coons and rap music and all of this different stuff. But he won't show you this. That's Paul. You know? The original Virgin Mary... All right, which that's all farce, it's all madness, but, you know, still the images, because in Greece they worshipped the Black Madonna, which was going off, but it, they, they, they knew that the, the holy people were dark-skinned, man. Yep. Yep. Believed to be a Byzantine uh, Psalter written in the 11th century in ancient Greek. Yep. The Psalter is a 14 odes and apocryphal Psalm 151. The exact province is unknown. There you go. Dark images, man. It's too it's overwhelming. Okay? Damn. Just icon after icon. There's so many more. Look at that. And see, they took some of these images and painted over them. I believe this is Ezekiel. Or Ezra. I think that's Ezra or Zika. One of them. 
There you go. How was Shia and the other two men on the cross? All right. They, they, those other two men were actually were also Israelites too, you know. They had their issues, but they were Israelites. All right. You see the crowd of people watching. Looks like baptism. So, at the end of the day, yeah, that's Moses. We can clearly see that, you know, something has gone wrong. But why? Because of biblical prophecy, man. All right? Our image was basically cast down through the Lord giving the earth to the hand of the wicked, as it says in Job 9 and 24. Okay? We'll do more, All right, but I just wanted to get that one out because I've been meaning to do one. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? All right. Now my days are swifter than the post. They flee away. They see no good. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hasted to the prey. So the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. All right, he covered the faces of the judges there. Who the true judges of the earth are the Israelites. The earth was created for us to rule, but now these heathen are in rulership. All right, and, and, and we're looking for the Lord to put us back in our rightful position so everything can go as it's supposed to go. It put everything back in its rightful order. See, through these people, everything has been taken out of its order and destroyed. And evil is called good and good is called evil. And the so-called white man's Race, all right, face is looked at as the face of justice, as the face of morality, as the face of life, as the face of love, when his actions and everything else show otherwise. You're not the true people of the, of, of the Bible. You're not the Israelites. You're the Edomites. You're being found out, and, and we're not going to stop. We're going to keep bringing this word out, man. So hopefully y'all are edified. I know I hit a lot of points, but, you know, through the Spirit, we give all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakah Hakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutation to the elect. Shalom.